So basically, what do you have more of? Do you have more positives or do you have more negatives, right? So that's kind of like the idea behind that. But that's how you approach it. Whichever side is larger, that's going to affect the outcome of the final. Right. So here's an example. So like I said, we're going back to sixth grade here. Uh, so this one is negative three plus two. Uh, the negative three would obviously go on the flip side. Negative. Good. And the two we're adding to, so we're going to put on the positive side. And the way that it works is that you subtract the two numbers. So you do three minus two. And then which side is larger? Is the two larger or is the three larger? The three. So the final outcome is going to be negative four because there's more negative than there is positive. Right? So that's just pretty, that's pretty much how it works. Try to make it simple for them to understand, make it, uh, you know, and also, I want to make a connection to, to the Bible. Like, how does this have to do with anything in the Bible, right? Um, so what I decided to do was I decided to pick some words out of the Bible, and we're going to put them on the chart that, that we have. So uh, on the next slide, we're going to see the first word, so joy. Right? That's a good one, right? That's positive, right? That's a good thing. Uh, another word is peace. Positive, right? Definitely. Uh, the next one, anger. Well, what do you think? Negative, right? That one goes there. Um, and then here's another one. This is a good one. Fits of rage. Fit, yeah, negative for sure. Uh, fits of rage, basically, you don't get your way, so you throw a fit, right? So uh, that's not good. And so just to uh, here's some other examples. I'm going to put a few more words. Uh, forgiveness, I put that on the positive side. Self control. I think self control is the opposite of like fits of rage in a way. Uh, you know, just you don't get in your way, but you're going to control your reaction. You're going to control your emotion. You're just going to keep your cool and, and not throw a fit, basically. Right? Hatred, uh, I put that on the negative side of selfishness. So my question is, which side is greater for you? Like, do you relate more to the positive side or is the negative side more uh, that fits your description, right? You know, because I think sometimes, you know, we hold on to a lot of negative things, right? And it does affect us, you know, especially like if we have a, more negatives in our life than positive, you know, we're, we're, you know, that's not going to be good for us in our walk with God. And, uh, you know, it, it, we definitely need to, to look into that. So uh, on the next slide, uh, it says, uh, what happens when you add negatives to your life? You know, what type of results will you obtain? All right, so when we add negative things into our life, do you think that's going to be good or do you think that's bad? That's bad, right? So, uh, a few bullet points that I have. Uh, first one, laziness. What happens when we put uh, include that in our daily routines, right? Or we carry that with us, we add that to our lives. You know, are we really being are we really doing something that's beneficial? Absolutely not, right? And then here's another one. Uh, bad influences. We're adding friendships to our life, we're adding people to our lives. But they're not the good type of people, right? How does that affect us? And in a moment, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about that, about having bad people around us uh, all the time, right? What about selfishness? That's another one. You know, when we add, you know, our, our needs are more important than others, right? We add more to what's important to us, but not what's important for everyone else. Um, here's another one doing what feels good instead of what is right. You know, what happens when we add that to our lives? When we, we always do what, what feels good to us, but not what is right. That's kind of along with selfishness, right? But um, that's, that's something that I thought of. And getting revenge. You know, I think uh, we live in a world uh, that is very revenge driven. You know, when people do me wrong, Maybe you don't 
don't have the heart to do something wrong back, but you have the heart to just cut them off and not help them and not be there for them and not show them a different way of doing it, right? So that, in a way, that's a, that's a type of revenge where uh, you, ju you just kind of, you know, oh, I'll leave them to, to figure it out themselves. You know, you just, I mean, I'm not saying that you need to keep a toxic uh, environment around you all the time, but, you know, I think the instant reaction is to just give up on that relationship, right? And just not really help that person out. You just take the easy way out. Yeah. Uh, another one, making excuses. You know, we say a lot of words, uh, but they're not really, they don't really mean anything, right? They're just, you know, what happens when we add that to our vocabulary, right? When we add a bunch of excuses. You know, what's going to happen? What type of results will you obtain? You're not going to grow as a person, and you're just going to be stuck. On the contrary, on the next slide, it says, what happens when you take away negatives? You know, what happens when you take away negatives from your life? What do you think is going to happen? Is that good or is that bad? That's good, right? So, uh, for example, here's some uh, bullet points that I came up with. Uh, getting rid of anger. What happens if we get rid of that? You know, the, first of all, we'll, we'll be a lot happier. Uh, we'll be more at peace. You know, we're just getting rid of negativity, you know, just uh, bad emotions. Uh, here's another one. What happens? Instead of adding selfishness, what about getting rid of selfishness? You know, what, what's going to happen there? You know, possibly build friendships. Uh, meaningful friendships, right? Uh, because when we're selfish, we only think about ourselves and we don't have, we don't reach out. But when we're selfless, we open the door to be there for others and to you know build strong connections with people and you know just really be there for for someone else. Uh, what about when you get rid of laziness? What's going to happen there? You know, like what when we get rid of laziness? You know, we're we're more we're more productive. We're we're getting things done. We're making time for people. We're you know making the best out of our day, right? And we're we're prioritizing our time with God. We're prioritizing our relationship with people, you know, and so many things. What happens when we get rid of uh, bad influences? You know, what's going to happen when we get rid of those uh, negative people in our lives that? holding us down and not reach, uh, not allowing us to reach our full potential, right? You know, just the crowd that you surround yourself with, if you get rid of that, you, you can really grow as a person. Uh, what about getting rid of uh, selfish desires? That's pretty much selfishness, so uh, not really much uh, to, to get into there. Um, and then what about the last one? Excuses. You know, what happens when we get rid of excuses? You know, instead of saying, oh, I did this because of this, right? Instead of just saying, you know what, I messed up, I'm going to try harder next time. You know, you're right, I should have I should have done better. But when we make excuses, we're showing that we're, we don't have the heart uh, to grow, that we're content with how we behave, that we're content with how we, re we react and how we approach the situation. But on, on the opposite end, you know, when we get rid of those excuses, you know, we just, yeah, you know, it hurts. It hurts to do that because you want to defend yourself, right? You want to justify why, why you did what you did. But sometimes you just need to keep it to yourself and be like, you know what, you're right. I should have done better. You know, and I think that that will allow us to grow as people. Um, on the next slide, I have... Going back to math, uh, because I know you guys wanted more of that. So, uh, so when you get rid of or subtract negative things, you add value to your life, right? Based on what we talked about. So uh, in the next bullet, uh, here's an example. 10 minus negative 3 equals to 10 plus 3. So I hear this thing, we all have heard this before. In math, two negatives make a positive. But what does that even mean? Right? Like it almost sounds like contradictory, right? Like, oh, but now they're alive, but in math, 
to negative the carbon. That is absolutely incorrect. And it's actually true in real life as well. Because what it what so a two negatives mean, it means to get rid of negatives. You know, so it's not necessarily two negatives make a positive, like two wrong things make a right. It's more like you're getting rid of negatives. And when you get rid of negatives, that's a positive thing. That's why uh, 10 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 10 plus 3. So when you get rid of three things that are negative, you're actually gaining something out of it. Right? So that's that's kind of like the the meaning behind it. So it's not it's it's not what society or what um, math teachers say like oh two negatives make a positive. This is actually the meaning behind it. Because if my kids ask me, sir, why do two negatives make a positive? And I say, just because, you know, that's just how it is. You know, that's not really going to stick, and it's not accurate at all. So, you know, you, it's important to know why that is, right? And it, and it, it, it can have spiritual application as well. Uh, on the next bullet point, uh, it says, when you add negative things, you're taken away from your life. So the example that, uh, that I came up with uh, is uh, negative 5 plus negative 7. So here, we're not subtracting negative 7, we are adding negative 7, right? So when we add negatives, that's actually subtracting, right? That's actually taking away. So, you know, that, that's kind of like what I, what I tell my kids. You know, when you add negative things to your life, you know, you're going to obtain negative results. You know, you're going to go in the wrong direction. But when you get rid of negatives, when you take away those negative things from your life, you're going to achieve positive results, right? So, and I think it just sticks with them and they get that, you know, and I, I think we, we need to understand that as well, uh, you know, as followers of Christ. Uh, so let's see what the Bible has to say about getting rid of negatives, because it does say this throughout the Bible. And these are a lot of scriptures that we read, uh, you know, in our, in our readings, you know, but these are not uncommon scriptures. Uh, so in the next uh, slide, it says, do not, be, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you are and stop sinning, for there are some who ignore, uh, who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. You know, remember uh, the bullet point that I came up with earlier, uh, bad influences? Yeah. You know, the Bible says that bad company or bad influences, bad people, they corrupt our character. You know, we get influenced by their behavior, by their mannerisms, by their, uh, you know, by the way they carry themselves, right? So, when we add bad influences to our life, bad company, you know, um, that is not a good thing. And we need to be mindful of that. You know, who are, what are we surrounding ourselves with? What am I filling my, my life with? Am I filling my life with spiritual people or people who are going to help me grow spiritually or am I filling my, uh, my life with people who, who uh, want to take me away from that? Here's another uh, Bible verse, uh, uh, verse in the Bible, Ephesians 4, uh, 29 through 32. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to the needs that it may benefit those who listen. So I'll stop there for now. Um, you know, the Bible, the Bible basically says to talk to each other in a way that builds each other up. You know, when we talk to our our friends or when we talk to our brothers and sisters, when we talk to our siblings, right? Siblings love to talk down on one another, right? Right? You know, when we talk bad to our, our siblings, or when we talk bad to people, uh, or when we, you know, that's not, that's not good. If we're not building each other up, then we're not following what the Bible says. You know? Um, so I'll continue on verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And then on um, verse 31, I underline, get rid of. We're getting rid of something. The Bible is telling us, get rid of something. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. 
Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Um, so, the Bible tells us to get rid of those negative things, right? Going back to that chart that we had earlier, like, where would bitterness fall under? Rage, anger, brawling, slander, malice. You know, the Bible says to get rid of those things. You know, which ones are, uh, you know, which ones are you holding on to, right? Are you holding on to bitterness? Are you still upset about things that happened in your past years ago that, that are holding you down? Rage. You know, when you don't get your way or when someone does something wrong to you, how do you react to that? Are you, uh, do you get angry? Do you bra uh, brawling? Brawling is another word for uh, fighting, right? Shoving, pushing, punching, or even with words, even, uh, verbally, right? You know, uh, the Bible says to get rid of these things. So, uh, on the next uh, next slide, Colossians 3, verse uh, 8 through 14. Again, we see that on the first sentence it says, uh, but now you must also rid yourselves. Again, get rid of something, right? The Bible's telling us, once again, get rid of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. You know, the Bible's telling us to get rid of these things. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and, and, and is in all. Amen. And then in the next slide it continues, uh, uh, starting verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and truly love, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them to, uh, all together in perfect unity. Basically, what I get out of this is be kind, be humble, be gentle, and don't stir up trouble. Right? Um, you know, and that's just, you know, like I said, the Bible has it throughout. Get rid of these things, right? So, uh, here we go. Here's another, here's another one in James 1, uh, verse 19, uh, 19 through uh, 25. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You know, uh, there's a popular saying that, uh, this is why uh, God gave us two ears and one mouth. That's right. Right? Because God wants us to use our ears more than our mouth. Yeah. God wants us to listen, and God wants us to hear the advice, hear uh, what's going on, and not be quick to make excuses or be quick to justify or, you know, just uh, say a bunch of pointless things, right? Yeah. Um, Starting off in verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of, there we go, there's that popular saying, right? Get rid of all more of them than the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Uh, next. Like anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and uh, continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. You know, if you, if you know what the Bible says, but you don't want to do it, then you're not truly a Christian. That's what I got. And so when I read things in the Bible, I, I wrestle with this. And I sometimes ask myself, am I really a Christian? Like, I, I see what the Bible is telling me what to do. I see what the Bible tells me to get rid of. I see what the Bible uh, expects from me. But yet, I, I struggle with that. And I want to please myself. I want to do what makes me happy. I want to do what feels right. You know, so I ask myself, am I really a Christian? You know, and, and what stood out to me 
was um, that last part uh, where let's see if I can in verse 25 but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do that, that kind of caught my attention because uh, what it's saying is like if you follow what the Bible says you will be blessed in what you do have you asked yourself why is God not blessing me like why is why am I struggling so much? Why am I not growing spiritually? Why? You know, so many questions that we ask ourselves, right? But the question is, are you following the Bible fully? And, you know, 100%. Not, okay, I'll, I'll get rid of this part of my life, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not ready to get rid of that next part yet. You know, uh, even though the Bible clearly says get rid of it. You know, are you holding on to those things? And then we hold on to those things and we wonder why we're not being blessed, right? We wonder why we don't feel like we're blessed in our spiritual life. You know, so it's just something to, to think about. And this is a challenge for me. Yeah. You know, I have uh, I have this bracelet I've had for a few years now. It says, prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that, that's towards me because I get in my head, like, are you really a Christian? You know, and I need to have that mindset. You know what, I'm gonna prove myself wrong. And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep working one day at a time. You know, just trying to get better slowly. But never settle for, for anything, right? That doesn't mean I'm perfect. That doesn't mean I'm gonna follow the Bible all the time. And I'm always gonna make the right choice because I'm human, right? But just having that mindset, you know what, I'm gonna try a little bit more and more each day. Because this is a really big sin, this is a really big issue for me, and I really want to work on it. You know, or do you just suppress it, put it to the side, and then not grow spiritually, right? That, those are your two options. Um, and sometimes, you know, we just drop it dead, right? We just drop whatever sin it is, cold turkey. Like for some of us, that's easier, right? Depending on what it is. So, but sometimes, What's happened to me in the past is where when I'm studying the Bible, like I didn't know that a certain thing I was doing was a sin. And as soon as I found out, I was like, all right, I'm done with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let that go. And I haven't looked back, right? But then there's other things that are more personal, that are more, that have deeper roots, you know, and they take a little bit of time. They take a lot of digging, a lot of uh, labor, you know? So, you know, just whatever you're dealing with, whatever negativity that you have, in your life, whether it needs to be, whether it's a, uh, it's going to take a lot of work, or whether it's not, you just need to work on getting rid of that. Uh, so, and the last slide that I have, it says, uh, what negative are currently present in your life and need to be taken away? You know, what are some negative things that, that you're holding on to that are still there? You know, uh, also, what do the negative things in your life outweigh the positive? You know, which one do you associate more with? You know, when you read these things, like what, what the Bible says to get rid of and what the Bible says to have in your life, which one is more in your life? You know, and if the negatives do outweigh the positive, what steps can you take today to change that? You know, what, what can you do right now to start working on those things? You know, um, I think I think the other thing that is not really said in this lesson is that sometimes getting rid of things is enough. You know, I think sometimes we get in this mindset that, okay, I didn't, I haven't brought someone up uh, to study the Bible. I haven't read so-and-so chapters today or this week, or I haven't shared my faith with anyone this week, or I haven't. We start focusing on what we haven't, uh, what we haven't done. But sometimes that getting rid of things is also a victory. You know, getting rid of anger. Maybe you didn't read your Bible as much as you wish you did that week. But maybe you got rid of something that's holding you down. 
you know, when you get rid of those negative things, that, that's actually a victory, that you're actually gaining out of it. So don't think that, you know, what you're not doing as far as, uh, you know, again, reading your Bible or uh, sharing your faith or, you know, all these things that we just get uh, focused on. Focus on the victory of getting rid of things. You know, focus on that. Maybe, maybe that's what, uh, I'm not saying like that's all we need to do, just get rid of things and then you're, you'll be fine. But sometimes those are the things that we need. Uh, those are the little victories that are going to keep us moving forward. So uh, that's pretty much what I, what I have for today. So thank you so much for, uh, uh, for being here, for listening, and I hope you enjoy your math. <laughs> Jesse was my math teacher, I think I would be, uh, I think